the last of the of the chorus goes thank you lord for your blessings on me and uh, that's that is true that every day he loads us up with benefits and he loads us up with his blessings so okay tonight i want to talk about the blessing mindset now, first of all, I want to mention what is a mindset? Well, it's a fixed attitude. Mm. And when something comes up uh, that's not associated with that fixed attitude, you say, stop it. And so the mindset we're talking about then is a mindset of blessings. We're expecting blessings. Amen. Now, things come uh, to you uh, from two different sources, and one is from God and it says every good gift and every perfect gift is from God. Uh, but there's also a world out there and a, a devil and all of those things because we live in a world uh, that had been operated with sin. And, and so from the Garden of Eden, when uh, Adam and Eve uh, sinned, uh, then there were bad things that happened to people. And so ever since the Garden of Eden and the and the disobedience that occurred in the Garden of Eden, people experience um, evil, uh, bad things, uh, but those do not come from God. Amen. It says that God is good, and this is the cornerstone of our lives. This is the cornerstone of this teaching today. God is good. You know, uh, Nahum uh, 1 verse 7 says the Lord is good. Uh, I, uh, Psalm 34, uh, mm -hmm. I believe verse 8 says that taste and see, see. that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. And Jesus encountered somebody in Mark 10, uh, and he, he told that young man, yet rich young ruler, there is none good but God. And so God is good, and every good thing that he has, he gives to you mm -hmm. uh, because you are in Christ Jesus. And God withholds no good thing, and he only gives good things, oh, only yeah. good. So the good comes from God, but there are also some tests and trials that we all face. And what we want to do today is to think about what do we do when these tests and trials come? Mm. Uh, and it re relates to your mindset. If you uh, are just willing to accept anything that comes your way, you don't have a blessing mindset. But if you have a blessing mindset, then that's the only thing you're going to uh, look for and the, mm. the things you're going to expect. You will expect God uh, to turn things around. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says uh, that God makes all things work together mm. for the good of those who love him mm -hmm. and are called according to his purpose. So, amen, so amen. are you a lover of God? If you are a lover of God and you know that you have a call according to his purpose, he's going to work everything good. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that comes your way is good. Many of the things that come your way are mm -hmm. tests and trials. And they are not good, but Romans 12, verse 21 says, overcome um, evil with, with good. good. And so you can always overcome whatever comes your way, whatever trial, whatever evil, whatever bad thing that comes your way, you can always overcome it by the word of God and by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So it's it's by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit, you can overcome every evil thing and turn it to good because God turns things to your good. Hmm. Now, what he said, what God said in Deuteronomy. Oh, here's Ruth. Oh, hello, my hey, goodness. Ruth. Ruth. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> what God said in Deuteronomy 30 verses 19 and 20 was that he has set before you some choices to make. He has set before you good and evil and blessing and cursing. And so what we're really focusing on here is blessing. 
So you have to choose every day, every situation, am I going to look for the blessing or am I going to accept the bad and the evil? Uh, it's a decision you have to make. If you have a mindset that says, I'm going to look for the blessing in every situation. And that's what I'm just presenting this to you today. Uh, what are you going to do with it? Uh, because heaven and earth is your witness. Mm. He said there in Deuteronomy uh, 30 verses 19 and 20. I said, I call heaven and earth as a witness oh, wow. this day. So heaven and earth is watching uh, what you're going to do. Are you going to make a decision to accept the blessings? Now, there may be some evil things coming. So let's look and see how uh, how we respond to something evil because we all face evil. We all face bad. Mm -hmm. uh, people may say uh, bad things about you. You may get uh, uh, at the end of the month, you may have more days than you have money. Uh, so there are all kinds of things that could happen. Uh, but what are you going to do with it? Well, James chapter 1, uh, verses 2 and 3 says something that's very interesting. He said, count it all joy when you face a test or a trial. So when a test comes, when something bad happens, you should say, woohoo, I'm <laughs> joyful because this is another opportunity to prove that the God that's within me will turn this to my good, will make all things work for my good. Uh, that, that's the way you approach tests. Mm. And when, when you approach tests this way, it says you will lack nothing. So mm. it might be an evil thing that comes your way it might be something bad. It might be something that wants to take away from you. But if you count it joy and you look for the blessing, it will take nothing from you. You will lack nothing. So everything, when God turns it to your good, you're going to be better off. It might be something good that comes and God will work with it and bring it to a higher level or it might have been something, an evil or a bad, but if you trust God, he will turn it to your good and you will lack nothing. You will miss nothing. Nothing will be subtracted from you because God only adds and multiplies. Well, that's right. Uh, but you've got to have a mindset, a mm -hmm. fixed mindset that says there's a blessing in this. It care every a trial and every situation carries a blessing. You have to look for the blessing. Now, I, I want to give you a personal example. Uh, and of course, we've uh, told this testimony a number of times, probably to this group. And that is uh, when our uh, daughter, Amy, was a baby, uh, the doctors told us that she was going to die. Now, we could have accepted that and just cried and uh, wept about it. But when, er when we went to several doctors and they all said she was going to die, what we did was just turn our back on all the religious teaching and uh, all uh, teaching that uh, mm -hmm. didn't give us hope. Uh, and anything that brought hopelessness, we turned our back on that. We turned our face to God, oh, yes, thank yielded you. to him, and it took a a few months, but in that time, we really sought God. We were filled with the Holy Spirit. We began praying in tongues, and we began building faith, and, and God built faith in us, and, and then one night, God gave us a miracle and healed Hallelujah. her, Hallelujah. but you know, I could have accepted that as an evil report and just accepted it, mm -hmm. so what do you do if one of your loved ones, if you receive an evil report over one of your loved ones, over your spouse or over your children, uh, what do you do about it? Do you just say, well, that's, that's life. Oh, that's, that's what the doctor said. There's nothing that can be done. Well, let me tell you, to him who believes, all, all things, things are, are possible. possible. And so 
when, when you take that attitude, you have a mindset that I'm not going to accept evil. I'm not going to accept the bad. I'm not going to accept these things. I'm going to look for the I'm going to look for the good and I'm going to overcome the evil. What did Romans 12, 21 say? It said, overcome evil, evil with good. good. Now, in the past, I, I would have thought, well, it's possible to overcome evil a lot of times, but you know, that's really a commandment. It's, it's a commandment. We need to take it as a commandment. If evil comes your way, what are we supposed to do? overcome um, evil. evil with good and, and so we have to hear what the holy spirit is saying hear what the word of god is saying and there's always we can always turn it to good so if you've received an evil report about yourself maybe mm -hmm. from the doctors mm -hmm. or about your spouse or about your child mm -hmm. you, you don't have to accept it if it's evil if it's bad it's a trial it's a test. And what do we do when we're in school if we're faced with a test? We pass it. Uh, uh, that's what we're, well, that's why we go to school. Uh, that's why we face tests so that we can pass the test. And in this case, we overcome evil with good. And so we have to look for the good because God always has a way of escape in Christ Jesus so that we can find what's going to cause us to overcome and to pass the test. Mm -hmm. And when the test comes, we say, woohoo, it's another test so that I can see God in my life, working in my life to turn this around, to bring, to overcome evil with good. Every test mm. can be passed. Every test can be overcome. I, I want you to think about the life of Jesus. He passed every test. Every test. He, and that was his mindset, it, to pass every test. Now, let's just, I want to give you a few examples of what happened when Jesus saw something that looked like a bad or a failure an apparent failure. What did he do? Well, let's think about Luke chapter 9. He sent out his disciples. He gave, I'm talking about the 12 disciples, he gave them power and authority to cast out demons. And then he went up on a mountain and he came back down and he found that they could not cast out a demon. Now you think, well, this is a failure on the part of Jesus. He gave them power and authority to overcome and cast out demons, but they couldn't do it. So Jesus didn't see this as a failure. Uh, let me explain to you what he did in Luke chapter 9 and Luke chapter 10. He came down, he cast out the demon, and, and he taught his disciples how to cast out demons. He said, this kind goes mm -hmm. out only by prayer, prayer and, and fasting. fasting. So after he had taught his 12 disciples, after he'd given them power and authority, then he sends out another 72 uh, disciples mm -hmm. in Luke chapter uh, 10. And they all come back and they're joyful because the demons are subject to them. So this was not a failure on Jesus's part. He came down to a place where he uh, saw his disciples and they weren't able to cast out a demon. He explained to them how to cast it out. He cast it out, and then he sent another 72 disciples mm -hmm. out to cast out demons. So this was a big turnaround. This was a big victory for Jesus in what looked like an apparent defeat. Now, let me give you some other examples. Well, one day, Jesus sent his 12 disciples out in a boat uh, on the water, and he went up on the mountain, and then a storm came up. Now, these 12 disciples, basically, that's his legacy. That's who he poured his life into for three years. And you might think, well, here he, his disciples are about to be lost at sea in a storm. Mm. But what did Jesus do? He walked on the, the water. water. Glory. Yeah, he walked on the water 
and he calmed the storm and he walked to his disciples and showed them that they could walk on the water because Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water as long as he was looking at Jesus. So here was an apparent failure in the working that his disciples were going to be lost at sea, but Jesus did something extraordinary. Ooh, glory. I, I want you to think radically today. Mm. You need to have a radical mindset. mindset. Think about God. I'm radical. Think about God turning every situation to victory for you. Amen. And that's what he said. I'm, I'm going to offer you, and this is about choices, blessing or cursing. What are you going to do every day? And when every uh, thing comes your way, what are, how are you going to approach those? If your mindset, if you have a fixed attitude, then you know that you can overcome anything that comes your way. This is the kind of mindset Jesus had. Uh, we see it when he walked on the water. We see it when he cast out the demons and taught his disciples to cast out demons and, and send them out. But let's look when he went to the cross. In uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it said, for the joy set before him. Damn. Now the cross, going to the cross was a difficult situation. Mm. It was an evil situation. No person had ever suffered what he was going to suffer. Mm. And you might say, well, other people were crucified, but he became sin. He who knew no sin mm, became, became sin. sin. So nobody suffered what Jesus suffered on the cross. And yet it was for the joy mm -hmm. set before him that he endured the cross. So he saw something beyond the evil. And then he, he died there, but he brought salvation to mankind through his death, uh, burial, and resurrection on, uh, from the cross. And another thing that's interesting now is that he went to, to hell. He, uh, Ephesians 4 went to the lower parts of, of, the, of the earth, it said, and when he went down there, I want you to think about this. No man has ever gone to hell and prospered, but Jesus prospered when he went to hell because he went by himself as sin, as sin mm. by himself, but he came out with a multitude of saints that, had, mm. that were being held mm. captive in Abraham's bosom, and he led them captivity, uh, captivity captive. Uh, and so he brought a great uh, triumphant parade, celebration. He came up out of the grave with a celebration, Hallelujah. bringing a multitude of saints that had been in Abraham's bosom, and he took them to heaven, mm -hmm. and now they're in heaven. That's what Ephesians uh, 4, uh, verses 7 through 10 talks about. And he gave gifts. He is an extravagant gift giver. And, and he started giving gifts. So he, Jesus, thought radically. He knew that he could overcome. There was a way to overcome every situation and turn it around because of Romans 8, 28 says, how God makes all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. If you are a lover of God, oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I hope you are a lover of God. If you are a lover of God, then you know that God wants to turn every situation, every test and every trial you face, he wants to turn it to your good. Now let's look at another example. You know, uh, Joseph in the Bible, in Genesis, his brothers were je jealous of him. This sounds like a bad situation about to happen. They, they were mm -hmm. jealous of him, and they threw him in a pit, and he was sold into slavery, and, uh, uh, and, and then he was there in Potiphar's house, and then uh, finally wound up in prison. And, and, but that wasn't the final thing, because God was with him all the way. And then uh pharaoh called for him and he came out and, and he and he ruled egypt and he was over uh, pharaoh's house 
and, and he and he gathered up the grain in the good years and he and he stored it up and then he passed it out in, in the years in which there was famine. And in verse uh in chapter 50, verse 20, he makes this incredible statement. Genesis. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. He's talking to his brothers, the very brothers that that stabbed him in the back and threw him in the in the pit and told uh, their dad that he had been killed by an evil uh, beast. And these same brothers, he, he said to them in uh, Genesis 50, verse 20, you meant this for evil, but God turned it to good. Woo, glory! You, you meant it for evil, but God turned, turned it, it for, to, good. for good. And, and that's what Romans 8, 28 is all about. It, it may look like it's an evil thing, but God will turn it to good. Now, how do you do that? Well, there's no magic formula. What you need is a close relationship with the Lord. Amen. And like what Sherry and I uh, did when, when our daughter, when the doctor said that our daughter was going to die, we turned ourselves to the Lord. Amen. We We yielded to the Lord. We sought him. We were filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We prayed in tongues. We, we began to get the scriptures inside of us. The word of God became alive to us. And, th and then it became uh, the living Jesus Christ uh, on the inside of us operating through us. So that changed. So it's not just a, a little thing I'm talking about here. To overcome, you can overcome every test and every trial but you have to yield yourself to the Lord. You have to seek him with all your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, in uh, Matthew chapter six, he said, seek first the kingdom of God. So whatever you're going through, seek first the kingdom, kingdom of, of God. God. Yield yourself to, to the Lord and, and uh, uh, get the word of God in you and let the word become the living Christ come up uh, out of you and change every mm. situation you can overcome not only can you overcome every test and every trial i want you to know that you are commanded to overcome evil with good so you've got to have a radical mindset to, to, to say when a, an evil thing comes your way to say Woohoo! <laughs> I'm joyful. I'm joyful Amen. because I have another opportunity to show that the Christ within me That's right. is going to turn this situation to my good. It's not about my natural abilities. Oh, no. <laughs> there are things we encounter that with your natural mind and your natural abilities, you cannot overcome. Mm. But with Christ, you can always overcome uh, because it says uh, that Christ strengthens us, yes. uh, that we can do all things. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And it also says that now thanks be unto God, God who always, always causes, causes us, us to, triumph. to triumph, to have victory. Always have victory. It's Christ. It's not my intellect that causes me to have victory. That's right. It's not my uh, mm -hmm. muscles and my strength that cause me to have mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. victory. It's Jesus Christ who lives in me. The Christ within me gives me victory all the time. And, and so don't ever accept a defeat. Hallelujah. Uh, now, it, it might be that it doesn't something might be taken away from you or, or hurt in some way, but it'll, but God will work it all out. He, uh, one verse, I mean, one translation talks about God orchestrates things. Mm, mm. You know how an orchestra works. Oh. Uh, sometimes you need something over here playing something. In, sometimes you need something over here playing, but God orchestrates things that good comes out of anything, any evil, any, test that you face you're commanded to overcome it overcome evil 
with, with good. good. That's going to take a radical mindset, mm -hmm. a radical mindset. It's going to be the attitude uh, that's like Jesus. He had a radical mindset. He never experienced failure. And don't think the cross was failure because yeah. for, the, for the joy <laughs> set before him, Amen. he endured the cross. So the, there was victory that came out of that cross of him going Amen. to the cross and being crucified. All of us are saved. Hallelujah. Uh, he, he made it possible for all of mankind through all ages to be saved by his death, burial, and resurrection. And so don't look at the cross as a uh, defeat because it was a great victory. It gave us reconciliation with our God. Up until that time, we were alienated. We were separated from God, and we had no way to reach God but by the cross and by Jesus Christ. Amen. So he never faced failure. Uh, uh, yeah, failure may have a, uh, come, found, to come to yeah. him in the form of a test, but he didn't stop. He didn't say, well, I, I give up. I just throw in the towel. I'm not going to do this anymore because I get tired. Uh, I'm sure he got tired, but he didn't quit. Mm -hmm. And thank God mm -hmm. Jesus Amen. didn't quit. He kept on going. And what I want you to know that if you take a radical mindset, if you, if you say, I'm going to choose, this is all about a decision. Are you going to choose to be a radical thinker, to always think blessings? There's a blessing here. I, I'm going to seek the Lord until I find the blessing. That's what Jesus did. That's how he operated. Amen. That was the mindset he had. But let's think about Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, you can have the mind, mind of, Christ. of Christ. You can have that mindset. Mm -hmm. You can have that fixed attitude Amen. that there's nothing going to come your way that's going to overcome you, that's going to overpower you. Uh, Isaiah 54 says, no weapon formed, formed against, against you shall, shall prosper, prosper, but you're going to rise up and, and bring vindication with your mouth. You're going to condemn the things, the weapons, and the and the plans of the enemy that are formed against you with your mouth. You proclaim what God says, and, and you can rest assured that God has a plan for victory in every situation. That's the way God works. God mm -hmm. is good. And he doesn't want you to feed him right. in any day, in any situation. Mm -hmm. He does. He's not going to accept defeat. And what I want you to, uh, to ask you, are you going to accept defeat in any situation? Regardless of what your friends say, uh, they may turn their back on you. They may stab you in the back. Uh, your uh, people, co-workers uh, uh, may come against you. Uh, the devil may come against you. But you can have victory in every situation. Do not settle for defeat. Mm -hmm. Do not throw in the towel. Do not quit. You were made for victory. And you have Christ living in you that will show you, operating through you, victory every day in every situation. Amen. Right, Amen.